Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. All right, welcome back to the channel. One of the things I've been learning about in my reloading journey here recently is the effect of neck tension on accuracy. If you're wondering where those flyers are coming from in your groups, it could be because of neck tension. There's a link in the description below to a video by Bolt Action Reloading where he goes into great detail on this and shows how that setting your neck tension can help shrink the size of your groups and improve your accuracy. So I have this expander die that I've mounted in my Lee breech lock bushing for my press. And how this works is you take an expander mandrel, you drop that into the die, you put the cap on, and then you insert the die into your press like you normally would. Then you take a case that has been full length resized, but without the expander ball. And then you take that case and you run that through the mandrel and that sets a consistent neck tension on your case. And I have different mandrels here from one thousandths under to three thousandths under. So what I've done is I've loaded 50 rounds. I've got five 10 shot groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in half thousandth increments from one thousandth to three thousandths in neck tension. And by using these expanders, you'll gain that consistency in your neck tension. And hopefully that will help to eliminate the flyers that I've been having. All right, so we're going to take these to the range and test them and see how they perform. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we're at the Georgia Gun Club's 100-yard indoor rifle range. And as mentioned in the introduction, I'm doing testing for neck tension. And I have these rounds. I've got 22.8 grains of Varget powder loaded with 75 grain bullets. I have some of these, which are the Burger VLD. And I didn't have enough to load the entire test. So two of these targets will have the 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point. Very similar design on these bullets. Here's a photo of the two side by side right here. And so I'm going to be testing neck tension starting at three thousandths of an inch, working down to two and a half to two to one and a half to one thousandths. And we'll see how these perform. Also, we'll be shooting my Tika T3X chambered in 223 Remington mounted in an MDT or chassis with a Arkin 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope. All right, stay tuned. As always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting, or you can skip forward to the results that follow. Shooting at 100 yards. All right, I've got to say that adjusting neck tension looks like it's a game changer. These all shot really well. So let's bring them in and take a look. First one here was a little scattered at 3,000. Then it started to tighten up. 
two thousandths of neck tension. Looks like that's my tightest group. But these are all really tight. So I'm going to take these home, measure these with the Hornady Ballistics app. We'll look at the extreme spread on these group sizes and also the mean radius. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be our best group. But I am really pleased because all of these shot really well. And I think it's the fact that we have consistent neck tension between these is why these all group so well. All right. So we'll take them home, take a look, and get back to you. Hold tight. All right, I'm back from the range and I've had a chance to measure my targets and analyze the results. Just a quick word on how I measure my groups. If you look at the photos here side by side, you'll see a photo of a screenshot from the Hornady Ballistics app. This is how I measure my groups and I transfer the information that comes from this photograph onto my target. So when you see the target on the right here, you'll see where I've made a note of the group size and the mean radius. And I've also put a red cross here where you see the average point of impact. And I've also indicated the elevation and the windage there as well. One of the things that you can do that will help more than anything else with your accuracy is to adjust your neck tension. And as you saw in the introduction, I have the die from 21st Century Reloading and I have loaded five groups with neck tension from three thousandths to two and a half to two to one and a half to one thousand. And I shot five ten shot groups at those settings. And I was frankly amazed out of all of these. I didn't have one group that was over an inch. I had groups at 0 0.92, 0 0.67, 0 0.45, 0 0.76 and 0 0.61. I had mean radiuses of 0 0.30, 0 0.21, 0 0.19, 0 0.21, and 0.19. So very pleased with how that went. And I'm shooting a 75 grain VLD target bullet, and I only had enough of those for the first three groups. And then so for the last two groups, I shot a 75 grain boat tail hollow point bullet from Hornady. Same grain weight, same charge weight, uh, similar velocities on all of these. So starting at group number one, I use the expander mandrel for 0.221 inches. And of course, we've got a 0.224 diameter bullet. So that gives it three thousandths of neck tension. We shot 10 shots. We had a group size of 0.92. We had a mean radius of 0.30. We had an average velocity of 2551 and a standard deviation of 12.3. I didn't really expect the velocity to vary much since we're shooting the same charge weight for all of these, but the neck tension does have some bearing on that because you see these shots start to speed up as that neck tension eases up. So we go from 2551 to 2568 to 2574 to 2597 and then end up at 2592, which is very similar to that last one. But as that neck tension decreases, the velocity here increases. At two and a half thousandths of neck tension, we had a group size of 0.67, a mean radius of 0.21, an average velocity of 2568, and a standard deviation of 22.6. At two thousandths of neck tension, I think this is probably where we want to do our loading. We had our best group at 0.45 inches with a mean radius of 0.19. And I want to point out again here that these are 10 shot groups. These are not three shot or five shot groups. These are actually 10 shot groups that we're shooting here today. And with 2000 neck tension, we've got a group size of 0.45 and a mean radius of 19. We have a average velocity of 2574 and a standard deviation of 22.3. Moving on to the Hornady uh, boat tail hollow point bullets. At one and a half thousandths of neck tension, we've got a group size of 0.76 and a mean radius of 0.21. We have an average velocity of 2597 and a standard deviation of 20.8. And at one thousandths of neck tension, we have a group size of 0 
a mean radius of 0.19. We have an average velocity of 2592 and a standard deviation of 24.2. If you take all of these and average them together, we had an average group size of 0.68 inches and an average mean radius of 0.22. And that's on 50 shots, my friend. So very pleased with the results here to have an average of 0.68 inches on 50 shots in five groups. But where we're going to focus, I believe, is right here at two thousandths. And so that's what we'll be using for our neck tension, at least on the 75 grain bullets with the Vargate powder. The lighter bullets may need a different neck tension, but we'll experiment with those and find that out. But for here, but for now, for these 75 grain bullets, it looks like I'm going to be loading these with two thousandths of neck tension. The other thing I noticed here is that I didn't have any flyers here on these groups. They all clustered together fairly well. They were fairly round. There might have been a little straggler maybe off to the side somewhere. But so having a consistent neck tension is going to prevent those flyers. All right, I hope you find this information helpful. It's certainly helped me. If you have any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, questions, please leave those in the comments below. I hope you will also like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.